Not long ago, we were introduced to one of the first models in LG's Gram range of laptops that finally became available in more and more regions, the LG Gram 16, a model that also made it into the Guinness World Records in the lightest 16-inch laptop category. It was that moment when we felt a new trend was starting to grow in the market, something recently confirmed by sales statistics. These statistics show that the large screen laptops market, especially 16-inch and above, has doubled in the last two years. The pandemic has obviously helped with this, meaning it has opened the appetite, or should I say, the eyes of the users, towards larger screens. LG is thus confirming the new trend, so today we got on the test bench an even more generous laptop than last year's model. Meet LG Gram 17. Let's see what the new model brings and if this generous 17-inch laptop lives up to its reputation and if it meets the high expectations, especially in portability and battery life. This toy weighs only 1.35 kilos. Jeez, I had to actually weigh it to believe my eyes. That's the weight of a 13-inch laptop, point in case. Yes, that's all the LG Gram 17 weighs, and to really get an idea of how light this laptop really is, I'll just tell you that the tiny MacBook Air that includes the smartphone-like M1 chipset weighs 1.29 kilos, meaning it's only 6 grams lighter than the elephant in the room. Honestly, I've never seen a laptop so big, yet so light. In fact, it's quite funny because when I first picked it up off the table, I instinctively braced to lift with more force than necessary. Needless to say, my brain calibrated the effort according to the visual evaluation of the object, and the laptop actually almost flew out of my hand. I underestimated my own strength, or more probably, the laptop's weight. Obviously, the devil is in the details, and the trick is always in the materials. Like the previous models, the LG Gram 17 is also clad in a magnesium alloy the lid, the bottom, but also the area around the keyboard and touchpad. A much lighter alloy than aluminum, obviously, but still shock resistant. Yes, magnesium is three times lighter than aluminum, but it can be extremely easy to mistake it for some plastic, and sadly, it's no match for aluminum in terms of heat dissipation either. But since it's also more flexible than aluminum, you'll find that although you can very easily lift the lid with one hand, it kind of flaps a bit, which is why I recommend opening the screen in the proper way, gripping from the middle of the webcam area. And just like its smaller sibling from the previous year, this Gram 17 tends to dent in the central keyboard area if you press a little bit harder somewhere between the space key and the touchpad. Anyway, that's not a big deal since this is normal for this softer alloy. But what I want to point out is that this tendency to bend on pressure, it's not a build quality issue. The Gram 17 comes with MIL STD 810G certifications, meaning it passed with flying colors not only military grade tests for extreme temperatures, but also shock and drop tests. So portable, check. Thin, Check, just 17.7 millimeters thick. It easily fits in my backpack designed for 15 inch laptops, so what more is there to say? It's ultra portable and compact for its size. And the charger actually shrank from last year. It's a new 65 watts charger of only 200 grams. And now let's move on to the huge matte screen. It's a 16 by 10 WQXGA 17.3 inch display that has a resolution of 2560 by 1600. So basically golden ratio everywhere. Mind you, the Gram 16 also had a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so the Koreans were among the first to contribute to this beneficial trend. And it should also be mentioned that we finally have a matte screen much brighter than the one on the previous model. We get an average of 400 nits, which makes the Gram 17 an ideal companion for outdoor work as well as indoors. However, I analyzed it and it's not a screen I'd recommend to professionals, but it does have upsides. Contrast 1400 to 1, black level of 0.32 nits, which is good, maximum brightness up to 440 nits, but averaging around 400. We also have a very good gamut made of 100% sRGB, 99% DCI-P3 and 87% Adobe RGB. But just like the previous generation's panel, it has pretty much the same weaknesses. Brightness deviation is quite high, up to 50 percent and delta E deviation at color uniformity skyrockets at high brightness settings. At least the color accuracy is good with a delta E of 1.5. The Gram 17 keeps its predecessor's cool keyboard and features a flawless touchpad 
that you'll fall in love with as soon as you get familiar with the layout. The keyboard has a very long stroke of 1.65 millimeters, an amazing value for the reduced thickness of the chassis. The keys have a pretty high resistance to pressing, so the user experience is top notch. The key lighting is obviously there and we have three levels in this regard. The numpad couldn't be missing from this huge diagonal, although it's still a bit cramped and squeezed. We have the same power button found on the Gram 16 in the form of a low profile key, but with a different stroke, so you have to press it a bit harder to avoid accidental pressing and overall it feels different. Also hidden here is the fingerprint reader. The connectivity is familiar again, some sort of a deja vu. Two USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports, an HDMI 2.0 port, a micro SD card reader and an audio jack. Charging is done via the Type-C port, a common thing for a laptop that's meant to be respectable in 2022. But I have the same beef as with the Gram 16. I would have appreciated one of the two Type-C ports on the right side, so you don't stress about your cable not reaching the socket. Obviously right-wingers using a mouse will say never mind, it's better that way, so the truth is somewhere in between. All in all, for an Ultrabook we have top-notch connectivity. Under the hood lies a 12th generation CPU from Intel, which I'm seeing for the first time. Core i7-1260P with a 28 watts TDP, 12 cores and 16 threads. So, 4 cores are performance and 8 cores are efficiency. Compared to the previous generation, namely i7-1165G7, 1260P features a 10-12% to performance boost in single core in Geekbench, but a spectacular increase by over 50% in multi-core. Obviously, with its integrated Intel Iris XE graphics chipset, this processor is clearly meant for office work. This makes it the do-it-all laptop suitable for carrying around on trips, vacations, etc. It won't let you down on daily tasks, as PC Mark 10 confirms. Its 4 cores and 8 threads of execution rank it above most office laptops. In Cinebench R15 and R23, there's again a spectacular jump in multi-core and incremental in single-core, a result similar to what we've got in Geekbench. The TDP went over 40 watts in the first tests, but after that it returned to normal, around 28 watts, and the temperature doesn't go over 90 degrees Celsius either, not even in repeated multi-core stress sessions. And by the way, during tests I set the fan profile to high. On normal mode I noticed a drop in performance in stress tests by more than 10-20% compared to high. Temperatures on the surface of the laptop are fine during normal office sessions and tend to get a little higher but still within acceptable limits. In full load tests they reach somewhere between 42 and 45 degrees Celsius on the keyboard and a little more than that in the area above the keyboard, where the hot air is also expelled. Like the previous 16-inch model, on the 17-inch one we also have a very low level of fan noise. In the current mode, with the fan mode set to normal, we didn't reach 30 decibels, and on high fan speed mode, during stress tests, we didn't exceed it in measurements more than 33-35 decibels. That's a really good level for an ultra portable. The 16 gig DDR5 module is obviously glued to the motherboard, as with any ultra portable we've seen in recent years. Instead, we have two SSD slots, and in one of these slots rests a super fast 1TB Samsung NVMe SSD with excellent speeds. Also, I knew the Gram series excelled especially at battery life, and I wasn't surprised, even though expectations were quite high. Indeed, there's 15% less battery life than on the 16-inch model, but kind reminder, we got a bigger screen instead. Anyway, 12 hours and 13 minutes in modern office is not bad, and in the video battery life test we almost hit 14 hours. The brightness was set to 160 nits and we kept the wireless connections active, even though they ran on battery saver mode. Anyway, I declare myself more than satisfied for a 17-inch laptop. The 80Wh battery is the same as last year's 16-inch model, and it's got a few more novel things on the software side. Glance by Mirror Metrics automatically locks the screen when the user walks away from the laptop. It also blurs content on the screen when someone else tries to look at the laptop from behind the user, and displays notifications in that regard. And here's another unheard of but very nifty feature. If an external monitor is connected to the laptop, the mouse cursor and the window used automatically move to the screen the user is looking at. So, Gram 17 inherits everything from the previous model. Basically, why fix something that isn't broken?
Therefore, we encounter a similar construction with upgrades here and there, such as memory, processor, SSD, but also a brighter and more importantly, matte display. If you want a laptop that will run unplugged for a full day's work, if you want a laptop with a big screen and at the same time very light, like a 13-14 inch notebook, the Gram 17 might be what you're looking for. Of course, all of these goodies come at a price that to me honestly seems quite spicy, meaning somewhere around $2200, but looking back at the previous models, it's equally clear that this series has never been cheap. Perhaps you need to pay the laptop's rent for residing within the book of records. Anyway, last year's model with the 11th gen Intel CPU was and still is around that price. So I'd say we're talking about a niche. This seems to be a model designed for a particular audience with some equally particular desires. To have great battery life, to have a big screen and to be extremely portable, aka very easy to carry. So what do you think? How do you find Gram 17? What do you like and don't like about it? What about the price? Is this laptop worth the money? You tell me guys down below in the comments section. If you found this review entertaining or even useful, please subscribe to our tiny channel and I promise you more will come. Thanks for watching and see you next week with another hopefully interesting laptop.